In this video, we're going to look at a very important real-world application of Law of Diminution Return, okay, LDR. And we're going to talk about a very important um, piece in history uh, written by Malthus. Okay? And um, he actually spent more than two decades uh, writing this piece called uh, Essay on Principle of Population. Okay? Um, simply speaking, he explored the relationship between population growth and food supply. Okay? And um, he used these to explain why in human's history, especially before Industrial Revolution, um, we find kind of the cycle of population growth. In other words, the population keeps growing till one point or threshold, and then we find famine and uh, a significant reduction of the population, and then the population start climbing up again till again one point or threshold and reduced. So um, it keeps going that way. Okay, now uh, to be able to understand these. Uh, relationship. The first thing is we got to understand the food supply or food production um, suffers from LDR, okay, uh, the law of diminishing returns. In other words, the increase in food output is arithmetically. In other words, it it will increase like you know from one unit to two units to three to four to five, it will grow like this, okay? And actually, because of the LDR, we would expect this uh, increase will slow down, okay? So uh, instead of go from one to two, two to three, three to four, we would expect probably one to two, and two to 2.5, uh, 2.8, I'm sorry. Uh, so there's only 0.8 growth, okay, compared to the you know, one unit growth at the beginning. And then the next one is probably going to be um, like half unit growth. So it could be 3.3. Uh, okay. So it will grow like this. But the population grows exponentially. Okay. If um, this is a traditional face to face um, instruction, then I will pull out a, a computer simulation. We can show you a fish tank, you know, how fast the number of fish would grow in that fish tank. But here I cannot do that okay, because of the uh, technical um, um, restrictions. Okay. But we can use another um, interesting example um, in history to show you, you know, how quickly population can grow. Okay? And we know this um, from, again, the Indian history. Okay? Um, there was an Indian king uh, who really liked a handmade um, uh, chessboard, okay? like what you saw on the, on the picture. And um, the owner of the chessboard said that, you know, that's fine, you can take my chessboard, but what I want is you just put one grain of rice in each square, okay, uh, in the first square, I'm sorry, and then double it for the every next square. In other words, you put one uh, grain of rice in the first square, and two in the second square, four in the third square, okay, so it will grow like from one to two, to 4, to 8, to 16, to 32, and so on and so forth, okay? And the Indian king thought, well, I'm the king of the nation. I'm rich enough. This is not going to be, you know, this is pretty easy, okay? I can give you that much rice, all right? Now, what actually happened is something like this, okay? So here, again, from 1 to 2 to 4 to 8 to 16, in the first few squares, it looks okay, right? Like, you know, that when we look at here, this one, the last one on the first row, 128 grains of rice, that's, you know, near to nothing for a king, right? 
but when it keeps growing as you can see here k stands for thousands m is you know you could say million but this is actually mega okay and um when we finish the first half of this chessboard we already reached here g means giga but you can just take this as a billion okay we already reached two billion uh grains of rice if we continue going that way again we're gonna hit trillion and eventually even you know the global rice output um is not gonna be able to meet the um you know the the uh, lead of the owner of the chase board okay so uh, nobody would be able to do that all right so this tells us you know how um the exponential the power of the exponential growth okay now here um as you could imagine um if the population is growing the same way okay let's put this on the on this board uh on this uh, uh graph okay so i put the population growth on the right hand side the vertical axis is a population uh the uh, horizontal axis is a time so we would expect that the population is going to grow like this okay so the growth rate is it's not just you know increasing but also the growth rate is increasing is accelerating okay so it will grow faster and faster all right because of that so again you can imagine like you know two parents um you know, or a couple has four kids and then these four kids will make eight kids as the next generation and continue going that way okay however the food production if you remember we did the um the tp curve right on the worksheet and um in the previous video we said because of the a law of diminishing returns we would expect the food supply or output would grow like these all right it gets flatter and flatter all right so when we put these two graphs next to each other you could imagine at some point because of the exponential population growth we're going to run out of food we're going to have starvation we're going to have famine we just don't have a lot of food to feed all the mouth uh, globally okay so that's why we see famine we see you know um all kinds of the malnutrition uh, issues right now before we move on and talk about other um things happened in our history about the population growth uh, there are um um, several technical things I want to mention here on this slide. Uh, the first thing is, in the past, the students tend to, you know, put these two graphs together. In other words, they put the population, um, for example, on the left graph, okay, so that you you will be able to let me use a laser pointer. You will be able to see a, a curve like these, okay, like exponential growth. Remember. Um, we can put two curves on the same graph if they share at least one axis right so if one axis is the same between the two graphs you can put them together okay but here on the left hand side the food production we put the total product or output on the vertical we put labor on the horizontal when we show population we put population on the vertical and time or years on the horizontal all four axes are different you are not supposed to put the two curves on the same graph okay all right keep that in your mind or <clears throat> some of you you know put that on the same graph and even find because you know one is getting flatter the other is getting steeper so you will definitely find the intersection point you would say you know at that point we're gonna see famine again that is dead wrong okay these two curves if they don't share any um, access this intersection is false okay it doesn't mean anything all right so please keep that in your mind all right <clears throat> so let's continue in, in um, talk about what mouth is find, ok, 
Okay, so he said that you know, um, in humans' history, uh, you know, there are many factors that keep uh, population growth in check, and the first group is called the positive or direct checks. Okay, so as we just said, because of the law of diminishing returns, the food supply sooner or later cannot catch up with the population growth. So we're going to have famine, have malnutrition, so uh, and also the civil war, right? If people don't have enough food, they have to fight, right, for food. So because of uh, all of these, we're going to see a lower um, birth rate, a higher death rate, or mortality rate. So that will bring the population down to a lower level. Okay. We also have something called the preventative checks. Okay. That means we get married later and uh, celebrate, you know, promoted by some religious groups. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> the, the, these things will also kind of passively uh, reduce the, uh, the growth of population. Okay. And that's why here uh, we show you the world population um, in history. Okay, so here the blue part is the uh, realistic data. So that's something already happened, I believe, before 2009. Okay, and the red part is the projected data. Okay, so we're looking at all the way to 2050, how, um, what's the world population. Okay, and as you can see here, <clears throat> uh, when Malthus wrote uh, that piece, it was uh, late 18th century or early 19th century, right? When the world's population started growing quickly, okay? So that made Malthus very worried about, you know, there could be famine or starvation coming very quickly, okay? And more specifically, he worried about um, the collapse of apprenticeship system at the beginning of the industrial revolution in england okay because of the industrial revolution you know a lot of uh, younger generations they used to you know stay with a, a master to learn you know the um like the artisan um uh, work okay making tools making uh, like um equipments by hand, they actually spend years okay, um, in their uh, master's home to learn the skills, and eventually the these apprentices uh, become the next generation ma masters. Okay, in this system, um, Malthus find that successfully keep the ma uh, uh, people from getting married at the early age because you, you know you don't have money you have to you know spend years learning the skills okay now at the beginning of the uh, industrial revolution um because of these you know massive factories built in um britain um, they hired a lot of younger uh, workers and they basically don't need any training don't need any you know education or skills so that make people, you know, really, um, you know, start working at the early age, start making money. Once they get money, they would um, start, you know, getting married and making kids. So the world population uh, kind of exploded. So Malthus uh, is was super concerned about that. Okay? They believe that, you know, we're going to see famine or malnutrition down the road. Okay. And of course, you know, uh, what Malthus worried um, did not really happen, okay? As you can see, you know, in this red box, um, the population continued to grow exponentially, which never happened in human history before, okay? Now, we're trying to make sense of that, you know, why this time the food supply does not successfully stop population growth, okay? Or why the LDR failed to keep population in check. Okay, so this is something we're gonna uh, continue looking at in the next video. We're gonna focus on these fixed inputs, which um, play a very important role here.